This is Tom Bernanke and I'm talking today about numbness, burning, tingling, throbbing, morning pain, nighttime pain. Do you have pain on the inside of your heel, on the bottom of your ankle? Do you have numbness, burning, and tingling? I think I'm repeating myself here, but that's how painful and annoying this problem is. It's said that 43%, and you know, that's a very specific number. I don't know how they got that, but 43% of people in America will have chronic heel pain that's not getting better. I'm gonna to talk to you about what 20% of that heel pain is said to be. And it's a nerve down by your heel called your Baxter's nerve. All those symptoms I mentioned, it causes all of them. It causes that pain that's just not getting better. You're having a hard time doing anything. You're having a hard time standing at work all day. You're having a hard time sleeping. That's a good chance that it's Baxter's neuropathy. And we're gonna show you some amazing things you can do for Baxter's neuropathy. Great treatments, remedies, options, and backup plans for how to start getting this thing better. And we're starting right now. So the great thing about Baxter's neuropathy is realistically, you should go see a podiatrist and get confirmed. But the reality is you can start doing things immediately to start getting some relief. So what I talk about is there's a lot of nerve problems, a lot of numbness, burning, tingling, all these things. It could be your back, it could be your hips, it could be your sciatic nerve in your butt, it could be your hamstring, it could be nerves pinched in the front of your foot, it could be tarsal tunnel on the inside of your ankle. If you think you might have any of those, check out the videos below. We talk about all those things and how to diagnose them. But today we're specifically talking about the Baxter's nerve, which is on the bottom of the heel. It's said that up to 20% of all heel pain is caused by this. It's kind of like plantar fasciitis, but plantar fascia, see these right here? These ligaments right here, blah, they're all falling apart on me. These are the plantar fascia down here that connect the heel to the toes. The nerve is underneath. So it's a branch of the lateral plantar calcaneal nerve. And what happens with this nerve is there's five grades of nerve injury. Number one is basically if I flicked you, it stays sore for a little bit and zings up your leg. Number five is if I took a knife and stabbed you and completely severed the nerve. Four is like if a car ran you over, that's pretty bad, but it will hopefully recover, but maybe not. You know, and number three is no matter what you do, it's gonna take like two, three months to get better. Number two is like, it's gonna take a couple days or a couple weeks to get better potentially. Most people with Baxter's neuropathy are somewhere in that grade two to three nerve injury where it's compressed, where it's irritated, where it's getting beat up with every step. And even if you do a lot of the good stuff I'm talking about, you could still be looking at it a couple days, couple weeks to get better. So it's really important to number one, have faith in the diagnosis. And number two, continue with the good stuff and trust that your friendly podiatrist is giving you good advice. So in this video, I always say, go see your podiatrist. And specifically, this stuff's misdiagnosed all the time. And that's a big problem. Uh, when I see people like, hey, I'm not getting better, doc, it's usually a different diagnosis. It's usually, you know, your knee might be buckling in, you might have hip pain, you might have arthritis somewhere else, even though your heel's hurting. Sometimes those things can contribute to it. So as a podiatrist, I would do a biomechanical exam. I'd check your back, your hips, your knees, your ankles, your feet. I'd check for tight muscles because the reality is the foot is kind of like the bumper on a car. And if your knees, your hips, your back are not working, it's kind of like brakes not working and you keep bumping into the stuff. You could keep replacing your bumper, but it's gonna keep getting damaged up. So the real key is we get an x-ray. Check for heel spurs, check for plantar fasciitis maybe an ultrasound, maybe an MRI. We could do an injection for that nerve to diagnose if potentially that nerve is where the pain's coming from. I do a lot of diagnostic injections to see, hey, does your pain go away when you inject it? So for example, if we injected the heel and it's not doing better at all, maybe it's the butt, maybe it's the hips where you have sciatico or a pinched disc in your back. That's possible because it would be ridiculous to waste six months trying to heal the foot when it's the back the whole time. That's why the podiatrist is really important. And I'm gonna show you a little bit biomechanically why the heel gets irritated. But the reality is down here, here's the anatomy. There's muscles, you know, underneath the plantar fascia uh, called your quadratus plantar, plantae. I always have a hard time pronouncing that one because nobody ever talks about that muscle. This is the only time we ever mention it. But it's a muscle that basically comes through your arch. There's four layers of muscles in the bottom of your foot and the nerve gets pinched in between them. 
So what happens is we have to get that swelling and that soreness gradually down over time. So step number one is you want to ice, you want to massage, you want to take the proper pills, you want to potentially get the right injection and you want to put the right creams on your heel. I haven't used an injection in the past to diagnose that this nerve was the problem because occasionally it might be your back, your sciatica, it might be other nerve pains causing this. So numbing up the heel can rule out the pain and then you know you have to target the heel. So that can be really important. But BioFreeze is great. It's cheap. You can roll it on. It's a cream. In like 15, 20 minutes, it's like icy hot. It gets your pain level down pretty quickly. So that's how you take care of the pain. Icing is great too. So freezing a water bottle is great. Freezing, you know, just taking a nice pack on the bottom of your foot, massaging back and forth can work really good. And doing massages. Massages on your plantar fascia on the back of the heel, especially with frozen devices, that's the best way to get pain relief. But it's not a permanent solution. So the really big thing here is icing. I love to freeze an ice can or a water bottle and just roll your feet over it for like 10 minutes, you know, five, 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be anything too crazy. And the big thing with this is you can use an ice ball. You know, these are great more for the calf and for the hamstring. It's really important to loosen up your muscles. So these rubber balls can work extremely well too. You know, they can loosen up and get that swelling out of those tight tissues, that muscle surrounding the Baxter's nerve. And really as that gets that fluid out of there, that can loosen up those muscles so they're not crushing that nerve. And then especially loosening up the calf muscle the hamstring. This makes you put less pressure through the arch because again, it's not just the vertical pressure. It's the lack of flexibility and the tightness that crushes the nerves and the nerve gets trapped in between these tight, stiff, sore muscles. So after you massage, and I'm talking like two, three, four, five minutes, maybe stretch, and then your hamstrings, your calf muscles, your feet, this combined with good support and good offloading, which we'll talk about soon, is a great combination but you have to get in the habit of being athletic like when you were a teenager massage and then stretch and warm up in the mornings creams can work really well below i link some of my favorites but voltaren over the counter cream is very good biofreeze cream can be really good so for tight sore muscles that can make a big big difference so pills are they my favorite they're not my favorite but anti-inflammatory pills like ibuprofen aleve for the first couple of weeks can be effective but always check with your doctor because these have the most side effects because they're circulating through your body so that can lead to a lot of problems for sure so i would recommend avoid the pills i'm a huge fan of massage guns so massage guns can work extremely well so specifically um, you know, on your calf, on your thigh, on your hamstring, those tight, thick muscles in the morning that make you lean more pressure onto your heels. That's what you want to use it for. You don't necessarily want to beat up the nerve with this thing. It's to loosen up those muscles in the morning and after work, uh, you know, or before bed, before you walk all over them and lean right into your heels. So the idea is just use this rubber ball. I don't like these other ones. I don't like the two pronged fork. I don't like the hard bullet or the nub that you see there. Those things are dangerous. Use that rubber ball, massage those soft tissues, and then stretch afterwards. So this is the biomechanics behind this happening. It's always the tighter foot that's getting the problem. In general, what tends to happen is the tighter foot right here. So see, my right foot can bend up a lot more by about 10 degrees than my left foot. See the difference right there? So what happens is I'm gonna have to twist out. See that external rotation right there? That's going to stretch and abnormally utilize those muscles through the bottom of the foot, leading to a higher likelihood of problems through the plantar fascia and through the Baxter's nerve. So that can cause bruising, tenderness, swelling, so take a look right here. When this gentleman runs, he's a young, healthy gentleman, his feet land perfectly straight. And what happens is they're not buckling out. That means they're not outwardly rotating or over pronating. But check out this foot right here. The feet are really turning out. You can see the inner ankle sags. That's going to stretch the plantar fascia more out of the heel. The muscles, the abductor hallucis, the quadratus plantae, 
it's going to stretch those muscles leading to compression of that nerve. Look at this older gentleman. He just thuds and lands and still bends in. He's not very flexible. That's going to lead to more stress on the nerves, on the plantar fascia ligament. That can really add up to cause problems. That's a big deal. This is a foot specific massager. So there's a lot of these out on the market. This is a highly rated one. And again, this is just one that I had sent to me and I used. And what happens is it's not anything fancy, but it has a bladder that inflates and squeezes the top of your foot, some rollers at the bottom that massage your foot and a bladder that inflates in the back of the heel. And that's really it. Inflating cuffs on top and back of the heel, some massagers on the bottom of the foot. You can say you can watch some TV, the ratings are pretty good. You know, there's some coupons. I think down in the show notes, if it's still active, there should be a good coupon. Ratings are pretty good. Is it perfect by itself? No, you still got to stretch and strengthen the remaining leg and back muscles as well. Compression socks. Compression socks and ankle braces can make a big difference too. So I'm a huge fan of compression socks. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about them because keeping that swelling down can prevent your nerves from stretching out and creating damage as well. I really do like these types of compression socks. Hey, listen, these are like 20 bucks for the pair. Uh, I don't even see the price. All right, what are they, $16.99? Uh, these are not expensive. You know, these are definitely worth doing. I've had a lot of patients have some relief with this. The idea is it gets your swelling down, gets your tightness down, it gets some of that pressure off that nerve down. That can make a big, big difference. It can take a lot of pain off that foot. So these can work really well. If the price works for you, they're not as good as the shoes and orthotics I'm going to talk about in a little bit, but realistically, if you need an extra little benefit, get yourself a pair of these compression socks. So you can see I've ordered these three times. These are low cost. A lot of people benefit. Number two is you want to stretch. You want to stretch your heels. You want to warm up in the morning. You want to do proper rehab to get better. So if I haven't hammered it in already, massage and warm up first. So that will help get rid of the pain. So just a couple ankle rolls in the morning, you know, massage, get those muscles loose. I love the massage sticks, the icing ahead of time, but then stretching. So before I massaged, I can't touch my toes, but after I do, I can easily do it. And then I stretch and I'm talking like 30 seconds per muscle for your hamstring, for your calf muscle, but make it a routine. The trick has to be a routine. There's a ton of stretching videos out there. Just do it every single day. Is something like this pretty good? Yeah, absolutely. You know, but in the videos, I kind of use a towel to do the same thing. You can do a lot of different stretches. You can sit in a chair. If you're really having a hard time getting down to your feet, you know, this is not bad. It holds your foot. It helps you get a nice calf stretch and a nice... <laughs> I'd use it specifically for these, although the thigh is good too, but use a towel to do the same thing. That's kind of my thoughts there. These stretch splints are pretty popular. And the idea is you put your foot into it overnight. So see, and you can adjust these straps, see these angled straps and tighten them. And that hinge along the heel tightens. This can hold you in a stretched position for a long time. These are called night splints because people wear them at night, but look at 90% of patients I know it's very uncomfortable to wear while sleeping. I would put this on while you're watching TV if you do use this to do some stretching, and it does work good. Number one, you could stretch yourself, but if you want the more automated route, put your foot in this, tighten it, and do it for like 10-15 minutes while you're watching TV. If it's more than like 15 minutes, your ankle and your Achilles tendon probably goes numb. Don't overstretch because you're going to cause pain. I have a lot of people complain about pain and cause more damage, especially making the front of their foot numb. So just be aware, these can work really well. They can be really effective, but don't use them more than 15 to 30 minutes and don't use them while you're sleeping because the reality is you're not going to be able to fall asleep properly. It's going to hurt and you're going to be overstretched and sore and probably damaged the next day in your calf muscle. So check it out, but it's not perfect. And number three is you got to strengthen your muscles, your thighs, your hips, your glutes, your butt. So these muscles can help and make a huge, huge difference in getting better in that regard. And what I like to do is use gravity. So right here, you know, don't throw out your back if you have a back problem or a fusion, but I press into my thighs, not painfully. I'm just kind of resting here to stretch my hamstrings, my calf muscles. But if you do this every day, you can track it. And I love to use a towel inside of my thighs as well. I'm stretching right there. But if you're having a hard time, 
a device like this, an ankle slant board, can help you keep track of it. So it starts at 15 degrees and see, can you touch the floor there? I can right there. But now I move up to say 20 degrees. And what happens is for a week or two, I'll do that. And if I feel pretty good, I'll move up to now 30 degrees. As an example, I think this goes up to like 45, 50 degrees. But over time, you can keep track of your flexibility, get your calf muscles, your hamstrings flexible. And that's the trick. So check this out right here. When I push down, look at how much the foot flattens out. So that bottom of the heel, the inside of the arch, all those nerves, all those muscles are stretching. So what you wanna do is you wanna get a good shoe like this. And I list a lot of my favorites down below. And what happens is as this foot flattens out right here, uh, you wanna stop that from flattening out. So as an example, so as an example, check this out. The foot's flattening out here, but right now, oh, look, nothing's flattening out. Same kind of thing when you look at it from the back right here. Look, it's flattening out. Those heel muscles are stretching. They're compressing that nerve. But in orthotic, look at nothing's happening. So you want a good shoe. You want a good orthotic. You want a good slipper. and you want a good sandal. So realistically, realistically, what would I do to start with? The big thing is the pain control, the icing, the massaging, gradually ease into that. Wear those good slippers at home, good sandals at home. Wear those good supportive shoes and orthotics. If the slipper and the sandal isn't doing it, go with the good shoe and the good orthotics. I list my favorites down below, but Consider that grade two and that grade three nerve injury. It's going to take you a few weeks. It's gonna take you a few months. If that's still not getting better, maybe you need to take a break from work. And as a podiatrist, I write people letters for that all the time to take time off work. So let those muscles cool down and swelling. Let that nerve recover. Listen, it's very rarely a surgery. Do you need surgery for a Baxter's nerve? Hardly ever. If you can get that muscle swelling down, if you can understand the anatomy, 95 plus percent of the time, you're gonna be in great shape and not need anything. But I always leave that random 5% just in case a meteor hits or your podiatrist finds a tumor or some type of severe problem you don't think you have. So that's always the disclaimer. Are these gel pads a good idea? You know, for the neuritis, it's not the worst idea. If you're missing a heel pad, if you can feel the bone in the bottom, this type of pad might be a great idea. But realistically, go with the orthotic and I'm going to show you a pad in a second. These things can't really fit on top of an orthotic. They can help maybe cushion that trapped nerve a little bit, but realistically it's probably a combination of some type of plantar fasciitis, fat pad loss, the nerve in there where this could help, but an orthotic plus some cushion. So for example, this smaller pad without that grid on the bottom is probably a much better choice to go. Get those orthotics I recommend down in the show notes and the one I used in my demonstration. It's really the stretching of that plantar fascia ligament by your foot flattening out that crushes that nerve and causes heel pain. It's not the vertical pressure. It's usually not the fat pad loss, although it can be for some people. You know, see these flats, the dress shoes that the they're being demonstrated in. It's really better for like dress shoes, but realistically, if you have a good tennis shoe, a good running shoe, plus a good insole, that's really the way to go. So check these out. They can help, but they shouldn't be your go-to first line. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us. So thank you. Difference for us. So if this video helped you at all, contribute down, down below. It really helps us out. Thanks and we appreciate you.